Welcome, this would be an overview about agriculture, how it evolved, the origin, the various types, important terms and the theory related to agriculture. So to begin with, human beings had a nomadic lifestyle that means they were not specifically attained themselves to one specific place. They were moving from one place to another. Till that time, what was important was hunting and gathering. That was the common activity. As person moved from one place to another, they hunted for animals and they gathered all the fruits and vegetables that was or the things that they could find to eat. But slowly, the settled lifestyle started. And it was with the starting of a settled lifestyle, agriculture started. And this was called as the first agricultural revolution. So first agricultural revolution started with a sedentary lifestyle when people settled at one place. Once they settled, they started to develop trade relations and also there was division of labor. That means some people were involved with agriculture, the other family members were involved with cooking, some of them were involved with uh, trade or exchange or barter system and this was the start for the first agricultural revolution. The next was the second agricultural revolution. Now this focused on increasing the yield that means how much production can I get per unit area that uh, that is the productivity that needs to be increased and the yield the amount that I can get from one tree. Okay, so increase in the production increase in the yield was one of the major things that started during the second revolution and here there was a concept of enclosure movement that started as capitalism started to grow people started to have their individual land plots and they created a fencing or a barrier around their land plots and this was known as the enclosure movement that means this is my territory i would have my vegetation in this area the next was the third agricultural revolution the third agricultural revolution was indeed notable. It started with mechanization. So machines came in. There was industries that started to work on the agricultural produce that was made. Also uh, tractors started. So tractors started around 1930s and that was the time uh, there was the development of internal combustion engine. With the development of internal combustion engine, tractors became a common scene in the agricultural plots. And this was the marking for the third revolution. Now, third revolution, one example, a classic example is Purity Dairies. Now, Purity Dairy is an important dairy in the region of Nashville in United States. And this dairy actually focuses on collecting the raw milk and taking it to the factory in the city at Nashville and then processing it and then uh, supplying the processed material. So it developed as an agribusiness, that means as a commercial enterprise. But agribusiness was not only restricted to this, even there were cases of single plantation. Single plantation means monocropping, only one crop would be grown, but that crop would be grown as a plantation. For example, rubber plantations in Indonesia, tea plantations in the regions of uh, Darjeeling, Sikkim, uh, the North, North uh, West Bengal. Then we have the coffee plantation in South India. Banana plantations again are good examples to cite about plantation. So here a single crop is grown over a wide spread land area. This is highly labor intensive crop. So a lot of labor is required in this vegetation and then this is processed commercially or the commercial benefits are reaped from this and this is called as a agribusiness again because you have commercial enterprises which come based on these so where you have tea plantation tea leaves you have the industries for drying rolling and finally the tea uh, packets that you can find in the market the next is in 1970s started the green revolution now this was the norman borlaug's idea and initiative under which 
there was a tremendous increase in production specifically for the staple crops like rice and wheat in the regions of india and china the production increased nearly 45% 60% in certain cases now this green revolution what was the key stake things the first important thing was the high yielding variety of seeds then was the fertilizers a large amount of land that was present could be utilized under green revolution and this required lot of water so irrigation was to be developed in order to have good green revolution but this green revolution came with its own drawbacks one drawback as you can see was a higher amount of irrigation led to lowering of the water table then the traditional practices of farming were lost there was increased economic inequalities because people who were producing good in green revolution got very prosperous and there was a setback to the others there was loss of biodiversity the land came under agriculture and therefore the biodiversity the flora and the fauna of the region was affected also there was increased salinity a good case study is the indira gandhi canal project in the region of uh, india in the thar area uh, beyond the thar area and this was the area where this indira gandhi canal used to run and through this canal irrigation was provided for green revolution but at the same time it created water logging in the surroundings and created extreme soil salinity which degraded the quality of soil in long run so again this was a setback but this this is how this agriculture